When it comes to the quarterbacks that are going to be a part of this 2016 NFL draft class, heading into the 2015 college football season, there was one quarterback that I was actually bigger on than many other people probably were. While there was a lot of attention paid to guys like Connor Cook and Christian Hackenberg and Cardale Jones, there was another quarterback that during the 2014 college football season had caught my attention and for a period of time I thought was actually going to be the hands-down number one quarterback prospect in this upcoming draft class. And of course I'm referencing Jared Goff. Coming off of the heels of an impressive bowl game performance against Air Force, the six foot four, 200 pound junior out of California has decided to throw his hat into the ring and declare his eligibility for the 2016 NFL Draft. Now heading into this college football season, I was big on him. I thought he had a lot of the tools you wanted out of a franchise NFL quarterback. Now, as the season went along, he had those moments where he showed me exactly what I envisioned him to be as a potential prospect, but he also had those games, most notably the five interception game against Utah, that gave me some real pause for concern. So what is the reality? Is Jared Goff a big-time talent? Is Jared Goff going to be a future franchise NFL quarterback? Or he, is he a guy that's a bit of a product of the system he played in in college? Is he a guy that's a little bit overrated and will ultimately over underwhelm at the NFL level? Well, let's take a look and look at some of the biggest strengths and weaknesses in Jared Goff's game heading into this upcoming draft. There are certain things that when I'm scouting a quarterback and trying to project them to the NFL level that really have more importance than others. And the thing about Jared Goff that I really like is some of those most important traits and characteristics that I look for in a future NFL starting quarterback, he's got them, and he's got them in some cases in great abundance. First, I look at his accuracy. To me, beyond question, the most accurate passer in the 2016 NFL draft. This guy is accurate in the short range, in the intermediate range, and really impresses me with his accuracy on the deep ball. This guy can make a lot of spectacular throws. Accuracy is not just about throwing it to a spot, but it's throwing a guy open, throwing him to a spot. His feel for that is really, really good. But his accuracy, which I think will ultimately be his big calling card at the NFL level, that's the single biggest strength that he has, but he has others too. I like his mobility. He's a guy that can move on his feet. He can extend plays with his feet outside of the pocket. He can throw on the move to the right. He can throw on the move to the left. He can pick up some yards with his feet. Now, he's not quite the athlete uh, with the ball in his hands as a runner as, let's say, a Paxton Lynch or especially a Carson Wentz. Uh, but he's a guy that would be good enough to where you would at least occasionally have to account for his ability to scramble, even though at times he might not be the most willing to do so. What I do like about him even more than just his natural ability to scramble and demonstrate some mobility, occasionally pick up some yards with his feet, is his ability to move within the pocket. And to me, that's a very important trait or characteristic for an NFL starting quarterback to have. At times, you can't break down the integrity of the pocket by, as soon as you get a little pass rush in your face, trying to scramble right or scramble left or turn your back and peel out one way or the other. Sometimes you have to know how to move right. You have to know how to move left. You have to know how to move up. Sometimes you have to know when to move back. And when I watch Jerry Goff on film, I see him consistently demonstrate this trait. And this is something that I really, really like to see out of young quarterback prospects. I'm really impressed as well with this field vision. In fact, I think his field vision is almost as good as his accuracy as a passer. Here's a guy that consistently demonstrated the ability to be able to read opposing defenses uh, during the play. You know, in terms of pre-snap recognition, everything else, that's something that all college quarterbacks need to work on a lot at the NFL level. But once the play goes, it's really hard to pin down where Jared Goff has thrown the ball based off of what I saw because consistently this guy could go through one, two, three reads, sometimes even come back. To me, not only is he the most accurate passer in the 2016 NFL draft class, but I think he uses his eyes the best out of anybody and he has the best field vision. Vision, excuse me. And I also like his ability to make the off balance throw. Here's a guy that can make a difficult throw without having his feet set perfectly under him, without having to step through the throw, without having to have those perfect fundamentals when things break down, when he's on the move, when somebody's coming in his face. He can throw off to the side. He can throw off of his back foot and not 
break down too much in terms of his accuracy. And that's an important trait as well to have as an NFL quarterback because you're not going to be able to stand tall in an open, clear pocket every single time. Sometimes you're going to have to make off-balance throws. Sometimes you're going to have to hit those difficult spots in mean, those difficult throws and difficult situations. And Jared Goff has demonstrated that ability to me to do that over the past couple of years at California. And I anticipate him being able to do more of the same at the NFL level. Now, based off of the strengths that I've just listed and the depth of admiration I had for them. Some of you might be saying, well, why did you change your opinion on him? Why isn't he your number one rated quarterback in the 2016 NFL draft? It's because of some of the negatives, some of the question marks, some of the areas of massive improvement that he needs in his game. Not to say he won't get there at some point in time. Not to say that he won't end up being the number one quarterback out of this draft class, but he has some major areas of concern. Number one is footwork. While it's great that he can throw off balance in the way that he does, his accuracy would be even better than it already is, and he would actually get more out of his arm in terms of functional arm strength if he more consistently stepped into his throws. You know, it's one thing at the college level to throw a lot off balance because your throwing windows are bigger, guys get more open, but at the NFL level, those throwing windows get smaller. Guys are more covered, and as a result, some of those throws that have looked accurate at the college level in the past aren't going to be nearly as accurate at the NFL level. And when you go into some of these situations, especially when you're playing games in December and maybe even January, you know, you're going to be dealing with harsher elements. There's a lot of different concerns here with this footwork. He's got to work on stepping into his throws more consistently, standing taller in the pocket in the face of pressure, which he has the ability to do with his ability to move within the pocket or scramble outside of the pocket. He's got to improve his footwork, though. He's got to learn to step into his throws and use more of his lower body on a consistent basis. Um, also, we talk about his arm strength. You know, and his footwork most certainly doesn't help this, but golf doesn't have a rocket arm. He doesn't have that prototype type of arm that you're looking for. I think he has enough arm, potentially, to make all of the throws at the NFL level, but if he doesn't improve his footwork and his throwing mechanics with his lower body and get more of his weight more evenly distributed throughout the entire throwing motion and throughout the throwing mechanics, some of those 15, 20 yard outs that you have to be able to throw at the NFL level, which are actually more like 30 to 40 yard passes, he could really struggle with. He could have a propensity to get those balls batted down, get those balls picked off, especially if he tips where he's throwing the ball a little early. He's got to work on strengthening his arm at least a little bit. In part, I think that might come just with improving his footwork, though. A couple of things that concern me in terms of the field vision, which I talked about being a really big strength of his game, and overall it is. At times he demonstrates a little bit of struggle when it comes to understanding zone coverage, where the throwing window is, where guys are on the defensive side. Somewhat similar, but not to the same degree of struggle as a Jameis Winston during his last college season at Florida State, because Winston had a tough time recognizing the zone. At times, Jared Goff demonstrates some of those similar type of struggles reading the zone. And in the NFL level, the zones are going to get tighter. The zones are going to be better. Even when you play bad defenses, he's got to be better at recognizing where the linebacker is, what that corner's responsibility is, what that safety's responsibility is. Is this guy going to be dropping back off of his own blitz? Now, these are things that he struggled with at times in California, and he needs to get better at at the NFL level. Also, in terms of his progression recognition, and here's what I mean, is when I talk about his field vision and being able to go through three, four reads and being able to go from one side of the field and go to the other, but then sometimes even come back or go here, there, here, and there, at times... I think he sees it too well, and he tries to get a little too cute, and this is where it can cause him some trouble, like in the game against Utah, the game against USC, for example. There are moments in time where you've got the running back in the flat. Yeah, it's only a five-yard pass, but the guy's open by five or eight yards. Just throw it there. You've seen him. Instead of trying to throw that 15-yard out, which may be completed, but is a lot more difficult throw than is necessary. Sometimes Jerry Goff needs to better recognize what he actually is seeing and make the smarter play. He doesn't put the ball at risk a ton, even though he's had some bad games like in Utah. When he's good, he's really good. But one thing that could help him avoid some of those potentially bad turnover-prone type of situations is to better understand the situation and better understand 
to take what the defense is giving to him. And then also you're going to hear questions about his physical build. Yes, he's six foot four, but he is kind of slight of frame at 200 pounds. So there are going to be concerns about his ability to hold up to the pounding at the NFL level. There's somewhat founded but somewhat unfounded concerns because at the end of the day, you could be a six foot five, 230 pound statuesque pocket passer who can't move and have all types of injury problems and hardly ever see the field because you can't stay healthy. See somebody like a Sam Bradford. But I look at Jared Goff at 200 pounds. He is going to have to put on some weight. He is going to need to add on 10 to 15 pounds, maybe even 20 pounds of pull to long-term be able to hold up to the wear and tear and the rigors of being an NFL starting quarterback. Now, as I referenced in my Carson Wentz scouting report, one of the most important things I think when evaluating quarterbacks in particular is trying to find an NFL comparison for them because it can in many ways be an asset in trying to project what this college quarterback is going to do at the next level. And when I look at Jared Goff, I see a couple of comparisons. One of the notable ones to me might be a Derek Carr because of the footwork, because at times that lack of footwork and lack of utilizing the lower body in the throwing motion saps some of the arm strength. Now Derek Carr has demonstrated better arm strength at the NFL level. He most certainly has improved on his footwork. So there's some comparisons there. But the guy that when I see Jared Goff, I see is not Aaron Rodgers. You're going to hear that comparison because Jared Goff went to California. Aaron Rodgers once went to California. Yeah, but so did freaking Kyle Bowler. That's a lazy-ass, ridiculous comparison that isn't based on a lot of factual evidence based off of the type of prospects both were coming out of California. To me, the most appropriate and accurate comparison I could come up with for Jared Goff is Teddy Bridgewater of the Minnesota Vikings. They are both guys coming out of college that have questions about their build and I think questions about their arm strength somewhat. But some of their biggest assets include their ability to see the entire field go through their progressions. I think they're both underrated athletes, sometimes guys that aren't willing to use their athleticism maybe as much as they should. Where ultimately, though, their big calling card is their accuracy. That's the name of the game, their ability to throw it to spots, to hit guys where they need to. That's their calling card. When you look at Bridgewater, is he going to be a guy that you win a Super Bowl because of? Maybe, maybe not. That's yet to be determined. But is he a guy, as the Minnesota Vikings have proven in 2015, that you can win guy games with and occasionally maybe win a game or two because of? Yes. And when I look at an accurate, appropriate comparison for Jared Goff at the NFL level, I see a lot of Teddy Bridgewater in him. When it comes to Jared Goff, for my money, he's the number two prospect at the quarterback position in this 2016 NFL Draft. That ranking could be a little bit misleading, and here's why I say that, is I think initially he's going to hit the ground running out of the gate far more than a Carson Wentz or a Paxton Lynch or anybody else. I think by far he's the most NFL-ready quarterback, the most NFL-ready pocket passer in this 2016 NFL draft class. His accuracy, like I mentioned before, is going to be his calling card, along with his ability to go through his progressions and see the entire field and keep plays alive in the pocket and outside of the pocket. He's got some real traits that will help him succeed initially at the NFL level, even if he occasionally has that stinker clunker, a 3-4 interception game. He'll probably be prone to those in the first two to three years of his career. But I think in general, when you look at the entirety of the body of work, he will at least initially hit the ground running and probably be by far the best quarterback prospect the first year or two. I think he's well suited for a traditional West Coast system. I do think he lacks the physical upside and the overall upside of guys like Carson Wentz and even a Paxton Lynch. And I don't know that Jared Goff is ever going to be an elite quarterback, a top five or seven guy in the National Football League. But I do think he's a potential 10- to 12-year starter at the NFL level and a potential franchise quarterback that you can build an organization around. I think ultimately, if you're a fan of a team that's in need of a quarterback or wants a quarterback or a combination of the two, you should ultimately be happy if your team takes him in the top 10. Like, look, whether this guy was on the board or that guy was on the board, if my Chicago Bears were sitting there somewhere between pick 8 and pick 14 and they drafted Jared Goff, I'm going to be a very, very happy man, even if it came at pick 8 or pick 9, because I think he belongs in that ranking in this year's draft class. However, 
if your team is able to get Jared Goff somehow, some way outside of the top 10, you should be really happy about that and really ecstatic about that because he's going to prove, in my opinion, to be a steal for your organization for many, many years to come. While I still think Carson Wentz is the number one quarterback prospect in this 2016 NFL draft, the gap between him and Jared Goff, I assure you, is very, very small. And I like a lot of his game, and I think Jared Goff has the potential to be a very, very good starting NFL quarterback for the next decade plus to come.